Hello. So to continue my Prime Minister series, we've got up to Prime Minister number 24, Robert Peel. Um, before I continue, I'd just like to make a quick um, a quick word to Ivo Sillard um, from Australia. Um, apologies if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. I'd just like to uh, say thank you for all your support. Um, to anyone else watching, um, this is a guy who's been very supportive of these videos and he's kind of given me the motivation to keep making them. So uh, I do thank him for that. Uh, to anyone else, please feel free to leave comments and um, yeah, uh, any questions, I'll try my best to answer. Um, if you want further information on prime ministers that is a lot more academic in depth and um, let's say comprehensive than my videos, uh, there is some academic videos online um, in terms of films, uh, in terms of I, films featuring Prime Ministers, I'll try my best to mention that within each uh, video if there is examples of um, films in which uh, any of these people have been uh, mentioned or characterised. Um, I've said initially that uh, British Prime Ministers tend not to get quite the same publicity within the UK as American presidents do within the US. Um, but of course, that's a presidential system. Anyway, to continue, Robert Peel. Um, this is uh, an interesting man because you'll notice initially there's a difference there. Robert Peel, just plain old Robert Peel. It's not like the third Marcus or the second Duke or anything like that. Um, Robert Peel was born at Chamber Hall in Bury, Lancashire, which is now part of Greater Manchester, um, to the Industrials and Parliamentarians to Robert Peel, first baronet. So he did come from the peerage, but uh, Peel Jr. was simply known as um, as Peel. He later got a knighthood as um, Sir Robert Peel. Um, Peel was a conservative, and there is some dispute whether he or Darby was the first truly conservative prime minister, although he did have the title of um, he he did have he was aligned to both the Tory and then as it morphed into the Conservative Party. Uh, one um, actually I'll get on to that in a minute, just a bit more of the biographical. Like I say, he was born in Bury in 1788. He became prime minister um, after the first. Um, after the first uh, term of the Duke of Wellington, sorry, excuse me, after the second term of the Duke of Wellington. So he came to office in 1834 until 1835, a brief period of five months, and then was in office for five years from 1841 to 1846, succeeding the Viscount Melbourne. Um, Peel had quite a turbulent time in office, um, especially in his second term. His first term was relatively uneventful, although it did include the Tamworth Manifesto, which is said to be the basically the blueprint for the modern Conservative Party. Um, so that was a very important historical document in the history of the Conservative Party. Um, and that's why he's sometimes called the first Conservative Prime Minister, um, as he was the author of that. Um, he, uh, the Whigs had formed a compact with Daniel O'Connell's Irish Radicals to repeat the defeat the government on various bills um, and after only 100 days in government his first ministry resigned. So you would think after this he would have um, been consigned to history. Um, one thing that is very important though to note about Peel is he is one prime minister who is arguably better known in a ministerial role outside the highest office than within it. For example later with um, Arthur Balfour he was known for the Balfour Declaration whilst Foreign Secretary. Well, in the case of Peel, um, he was known for his role as Home Secretary in creating basically the modern police force. He served as Home Secretary from 1828 to 1830 um, under Wellington, and during that time, he instigated the the path to create the modern police force and the world's first professional police force. There's a little bit some debate about this was London's Metropolitan Police in 1830. Um, and uh, Peel was responsible for helping to create that. Um, 
So just to give uh, his uh, a little bit of biography uh, at his time during the second um, uh, the second administration, I should say he was initially a supporter of, of discrimination against Catholics, but eventually supported the Roman Catholic Relief Act of 1829. Um, he's often regarded as one of the 19th century stop, top statesmen. He carried about Catholic emancipation, he repealed the Corn Laws, which were very unpopular, and he created the modern Conservative Party in the ruins of old Toryism. Um, there were numerous big reforms passed during his time. Um, the Factory Act of 1844, um, for example, was designed to, just getting the link up right now, um, it was a very important act of labour laws. It's ironic this was passed by a Conservative Prime Minister or a Conservative government, and this was used to regulate the conditions of industrial employment, which of course in those days was very dangerous. Young children were still sent to work in mills. It was it was a tough time. Um, in 1843, Peel was almost assassinated um, by a criminally insane Scottish woodsman named Daniel McNaughton, who had stalked him for several days before accidentally killed killing his secretary, Edward Drummond. So that was a close assassination attempt. Um, there's been a few in British history. Peel was one such uh, person who escaped an assassination. Um, but there was something called the McNaughton Rules, uh, which was basically came about to legislate on whether or not there would be criminal responsibility in English common law. Um, so Peel was... Uh, excuse me, just bear with me. You see, what I'm doing is looking at several articles at the same time, so uh, I do thank you for your patience. Um, he moved against landowners by repealing the Corn Laws, which supported agricultural revenues by restricting grain imports. Um, Peel was such an influential figure that he had his own faction uh, known as the Peelites, a um, hardcore group of supporters who stayed around for a while. Uh, there was only one other Prime Minister, though, who was a known Peelite, and that was Lord Aberdeen. Um, Peel um, came from quite a prominent family. His third son, Sir William Peel, was a neighbour commander and a recipient of the Victoria Cross. Um, what else can I say on Peel? Um, yeah, so all in all, he's quite an interesting figure. He died in 1850 in Westminster at 62. So uh, not an exceptionally long life, but uh, a very accomplished life. Um, he is ranked among our top prime ministers, usually in the top 10, uh, most notably for his great reforms during office and also um, for his role in creating the modern police force. Um, to give some uh, information directly from the 10 Downing Street website, um, this is a quote from Peel. It seems, there seem to me to be very few facts, at least ascertainable facts in politics. Um, Sir so Robert Peel's period in office in government as Prime Minister in another office was a milestone for social reform. Landmark legislation cut working hours for women and children, created cheap and regular real services and reorganised policing of London, radically changing society. So we can't underestimate the influence that he had. Um, he was a, a staunch unionist and uh, opposed to Catholic emancipation uh, at that time known as Orange Peel. That's something I didn't realise actually. Orange of course being the colour of Protestantism. Um, he uh, also reformed the jail system with payment for jailers and education for the inmates. So I think we need to give Peel quite a lot of credit for his, um, his reforms in this regard. Um, by the way, the creation of the Peace Force led to, this is actually the origins of the term Bobby. Um, of course, Bobby is short for Robert, Robert Peel. He created the police force. That's why British police officers are nicknamed Bobbins. In the early days, they were also nicknamed Peelers, um, not so much today. Um, I'm not sure if old Bill is also descended from that. Um, another piece of legislation passed in his government was the Mines Act of 1842 to ban the employment of women and children underground and the Factory Act of 1844, uh, which I already mentioned. Um, the Corn Laws were finally repealed in 1846. Um, 
uh, it says his maiden speech in the House of Commons was a sensation, and he famously described by the Speaker of the House of Commons as the best first speech since that as of William Pitt. I don't know whether that's Pitt the Elder or the Younger, but nevertheless, quite clearly, Peel had a big impact. Um, go round this up soon. He is uh, remembered uh, probably by more statues than any other Prime Minister. There are statues to Peel in Bury, at Parliament Square in London, at Piccadilly Gardens in Manchester, at Woodhouse Moor in Leeds, at George Square in Glasgow, at Peel Park in Bradford, at Gosworth Old Hall, and at Edgebaston in Birmingham. So uh, the Wool Exchange in Bradford, the Peel Park in Bradford, Tamworth Town Centre, Montrose Town Centre. Um, so he is definitely commemorated, certainly in statues. Um, and even if the general public maybe don't necessarily remember the man, they certainly know of uh, uh, Peters and would perhaps be familiar with his role in that. So that is Sir Robert Peel, um, 1788 to 1850, in office from 1834 to 1835, and again from 1841 to 1846.